Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for joining me in a science lesson. This one's on the carbon cycle where I'm going to be spending time teaching you about what carbon is, what the carbon cycle is, and some of the day-to-day -day concerns related to the carbon cycle and maybe what we can do about it to make this world a, a better place to live in. But before I begin the carbon cycle, I'm going to be saying the word carbon a lot. And what I want you to think of when I say carbon is think of some coal. You see this coal here that's in this picture? Think of taking coal and pounding it into dust and then taking that dust and pounding it even into finer dust until it becomes so fine that you can't even see that dust. That essentially is what carbon is. It's a very, very insignificant small amount. It's, it's called an element because it's so small of uh, coal. Let's simplify it down like this. This is an introductory lesson on the carbon cycle, so I'm going to try to simplify things down for you quite significantly. The carbon cycle, guys, is a very complex cycle. I'm not going to start with this picture here because there's a lot going on. What I want to do is I want to break it down into parts. I want to break it down into little chunks and then towards the end of this video, put all these pieces together again. So what is carbon? Well, we said carbon is, you know, that fine coal dust. And uh, what it is, really what it does, is it builds life. It's the building block of life. Everything around you that you see has a huge carbon component to it. It's the fourth most abundant element in the universe, right after hydrogen, helium, and oxygen by mass. So if you weight all these elements, carbon is number four. And not just in our world, but I'm talking the universe, baby. I'm talking about, you know, the our, all the galaxies put together. Carbon's in space. It's on other planets. It's, you know, it's, it's an essential part of the universe. Think of carbon as a puzzle piece. When that puzzle piece, guys, is sitting by itself, what does it really do? It does nothing, right? That car, That puzzle piece here is really nothing until you join it with other pieces. And carbon is essentially the same way. Carbon in and by itself really doesn't do very much. It's when it joins with other things that it becomes quite important. So it connects with other elements, like it connects with hydrogens and oxygens, and you don't know what half this stuff means yet, but it joins with them to make cool stuff. It can be both good and bad, depending on what it joins and what it connects with. For example, Coal could be good, right? Could also be bad. It can cause pollution, right? But it's also good because it gives us, you know, some technologies and uh, that are useful. You know, like, you know, the first train that was in the, the steam train and, and, you know, all a lot of it was generated, you know, by burning coal and generating, creating heat. But you know what else? Diamond came from coal as well. Now, coal is carbon. And diamond came from coal, right? It's just highly compressed coal. I remember an episode of Superman where Superman, I think it was the second or third version of Superman, Superman 3, I think. And Superman at the very end of the movie comes down. He takes some coal in his hand and he compresses it. He just squishes it. And when he opens his hand, it turned into diamond. You see, diamond comes from coal that's buried deep under the earth under so much mass that it gets highly compressed and eventually over millions of years turns into diamond. That's what diamond, That's where diamond comes from. So diamond is carbon. It's beautiful carbon. Here, this is sugar. Now that's, that's sugar under a microscope. You see these red blobs here? Think of them as the carbons and they're connecting to these white blobs. And don't worry about what these white blobs are. But you see here carbon connecting with these white things makes sugar but carbon can also be used to make coal and carbon can also be used to make diamond. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? That's really cool how carbon can just turn into these different things depending on what it connects to. And here when carbon connects to these O, oh, these O's are oxygens, you get what's called carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is, um, I mean, it's neither good nor bad. I mean, plants love it, but if we breathe too much of it and we die, Right. So, I mean, it could be bad. It could be good. And we're going to talk a little bit more about it, too. So you see how carbon, though, where, depending on what it connects to, can be, you know, different entities. It can just transform into different things. Let's talk about how carbon can be bad. 
So you see a picture here of the Earth. He's really sad. He's got a fever because, well, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about why that is. But here you see the polar bears. And look really closely at this guy here. He's sitting on the last piece of iceberg because they all melted. He's got nowhere to go. So let's talk about how that happened. You see, when carbon gets into the air, as we saw in the last page, it joins with other gases and makes carbon dioxide. And that's a good thing because you know what carbon dioxide does? It traps heat. It's like a heat fridge. It takes heat from the sun and it locks it up. So what that means is that the air gets warmer because carbon dioxide is in the air. And if that warms up, the air warms up too. And that's a good thing because without it, the earth would be a really cold place. But too much carbon dioxide and then you get this. Earth is feeling really sick, gets really hot. Then you get these polar bears and, and, and you know, penguins and things that live in the, in the cold environment. They got no more homes to live in because it's all melted. So here I'm talking about how it's good in moderation, but too much is no good. Icebergs start to melt. The sea goes higher, rises because of all that extra water melting in. We got the wildlife is threatened and the weather patterns start to change. You start getting more severe weather conditions happening all across the planet. But wait, carbon can be good. See this guy? He's carbon. He could be good guy too. For example, carbon builds trees. Almost every piece of these trees here is built out of carbon. And when that tree is built, it breathes in the carbon that's in the air. You know that same carbon that's warming up our earth? That, that tree will breathe it in and lock it up inside of it. So then the earth gets more, uh, the, the, the air gets more, uh, I, I guess, uh, cooler in a sense. You know, there's less carbon floating around. So that's a good thing. But you know what? So here, let's look at these notes. It's a building block of trees. Carbon enters from the air, so it kind of goes inside. It's breathed in. But watch out because those same trees that are trapping this carbon by breathing it in and locking it up inside, when you burn those trees, if they burn, that carbon gets back into the air. All of it. Every bit of carbon that's locked up in these trees escapes back into the air and floods the air with lots and lots of carbons, which can warm up our air even more, causing serious global changes. Good news. Carbon can also help make energy. You see, when that carbon gets into plants, that plant breathes it in. And you know, it doesn't just breathe it in. It turns it... Well, here's a picture of it breathing it in. That C's here, those C's are carbons going into the plant and it uses it to make fruits. Right, and those fruits are packed with energy, just loaded with energy. And uh, so, I mean, this is all carbon stored inside. It's carbon stored inside. Remember we said carbon can be transformed into sugar? And then what happens is uh, I'm going to teach you this word respiration. It just means breathing. Memorize this word. You see, we eat that apple, which has carbon in it, and that carbon goes inside of us and gives us energy and, you know, makes us stronger and makes us taller and, you know, we can, we can grow new cells. And those carbon then, you know what we do... <laughs> Yeah, that's not peppermint flavor either. This is, uh, yeah, you know, he's breathing out all this air. It's carbon dioxide air. You know, every time you go, you breathe out, you're breathing out this here, baby. You're going carbon dioxide. It's coming out of you and going back into the air, which is okay, remember. That's okay. It's when you got too much of it. We're going to talk about how you get too much carbon in the air. And I'm not talking about just breathing. I mean, we got to breathe. Don't start holding your breath thinking you're going to save the environment and the planet. Don't do that. There's better ways of fixing the earth than just holding your breath. So respiring means breathing. And every time you breathe out, you're breathing out some carbon. Trees respire too. And I know what some of you are thinking, Mr. Melham, trees don't breathe out carbon dioxide. They breathe out oxygen. They do, but they only breathe out oxygen in the daytime. At night, they're like you and me. They breathe out carbon dioxide. So loose trees now are pumping out carbon back into the air. 
Well, how's that different than those trees burning down and creating all this extra pollution? There's a big difference because when you burn the tree down, all that carbon that's stuck in the wood, all that carbon that's stuck in the leaves, all of it comes back into the air and that's way too much carbon than just simple tree breaths. You know what else breathes too, respires? The decomposers, what are they? Meet my decomposer friends. I got Bob Frank and uh, I don't know what his name is, but those are decomposers and they love to eat dead things. And you know what? Those dead things used to be living and those living things ate stuff. Like this horse here used to eat grass. He ate apples. He ate carrots. And all of these things had carbon, which went into that horse or what is a horse or cow? I think it's a horse. It went into that horse's body. And now that the horse is dead, these guys will munch on him. They're going to munch on him and that carbon's going to go into their bodies. And you know what's going to happen? These things have to breathe too. And they breathe out just like us, carbon dioxide. But a little buggy, little buggy breath. So they don't, they're kind of like, hur, hur. and then when this tree, when this flower dies, well, these guys are going to eat that and take that carbon and recycle it. And this guy, eventually he's going to die. And this guy used to eat stuff that had carbon in it. And this cycle just continues. And some of the carbon, you see all this, you know, this horse eventually is going to turn into like, you know, uh, humus too, soil. And that's got carbon in it. So you see how this carbon is going into the air. It's going into these decomposers. It's going back into the soil. It's going all over the place, baby. And you see this banana and you see this piece of bread and what's on it here. This is fungus, right? This is fungus living on it. And this fungus is eating the bread. It's munching on it. It's living on it. Guess what made the bread? You guessed it. Carbon. And that carbon now is going into the fungus. And that fungus, yeah, pumps it into the air and, and inside of it. And so you see now this, this, this process is cycling. And you know what else carbon does? It helps build you and me. Look at your hands. You see that skin that's on your hands? Did you know that it's mostly carbon? There's so much carbon in every cell of your body. Here's the numbers. You got millions. You got millions, not in your body, but inside of each one of your cells, each cell has millions. Imagine all the cells in your body. You've got billions and billions and trillions of cells in your body. Each one has millions. Of, that's a lot of carbon in your body. And then when you die, Bob Frank and uh, whatever his name is, they come and uh, munch on that carbon and leak it back into the environment. There's another thing carbon does. It helps create fossil fuels. You know when the dinosaurs died? And when those ancient prehistoric plants died and they got buried under the ocean or under a swamp and that, that, that sediment started piling on them, well, a lot of them turned into coal. That's where coal came from. And a lot of them turned into oil and um, all that you know stuff that we use now to fire up our engines. And so those living organisms, those, uh, you know, dinosaurs, and they ate stuff with carbon. So they put that carbon inside of them. And when they died and turned into coal and oil, well, that now is essentially just oil with uh, carbon in it. All that carbon's gone into the oil. Now, what do we do with it? We dig it out of the ground and we pump it in our cars and we burn it in our engines and we fire up our furnaces and all that stuff to keep us warm and give us transportation. But you know what else? I'm going to show you in the slide after this. Here's just a summary of what I said. But you know what else it does? When you burn that stuff, and uh, I want you to know this word here. It means to burn, combustion. When you burn fossil fuels, all that carbon that's in the oil and the gas and the coal gets pumped back into our air. And remember what we said carbon does in the air? It turns into carbon dioxide and that stores heat, making our air even warmer. And then, you know, what happens is, you know, we start burning it 
And, you know, here's some turning into carbon. I mean, it doesn't really spell CO2, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a comic, you know. And our car's over here. Look at this car here. He's burning it, creating more carbon dioxide in the air. And then what happens here? We got all these, you know, carbon sources being burnt. And then our Earth gets sad. And then this guy here. I mean, what's... Look at him. I mean, he's on the last iceberg here. I don't know what the cameraman's doing. Doesn't help him. You know, he's just looking, taking pictures of him. Poor guy. You know, I'm I'm making light of this, but it is a very serious situation happening in our planet right now. And, you know, it's it's not the cameraman's job to help this polar bear. It's you and I's job. We got to, you know, save our planet. Stop pumping so much carbon in our air. Now, the most important part. Well, it's not the most important, but it's an important part. Carbon is stored in our oceans. Nine billion tons of it. I want you to imagine nine billion tons. Here's an analogy. Take every vehicle, I'm talking car, truck, anything that moves on wheels, and put it, and I'm talking everyone in the world, put it on a scale, weigh it all. That's a lot of cars and trucks. The amount of carbon inside our oceans is way more than that. That's just kind of a quick glimpse into how much carbon's in our oceans. Now, that's a good thing because if it wasn't in our oceans, it'd be in our air. And that would be a disaster because that's a lot of carbon to put back in our air. Now, you know your soda can. You know when you open it and it goes, Psss. the reason you got that Psss sound is because that carbon dioxide is getting shot back into the air. But how did that carbon dioxide get into the pop can to begin with? We pumped it in there, right? The companies, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, whatever their name is, they put it inside there because water or pop can store carbon dioxide really, really well. And so can our oceans. So here's what happens. The carbon dioxide that's in the air goes into our oceans and then it goes into our plants. So say into plants. And it, um, it gets eaten by the fish. So the fish eats it. And um, you know what happens to that fish when it dies? It falls to the bottom. And, uh, you know, the other fishies will eat it, taking that carbon. So look what's happening here. We got the carbon going into the water. It goes into the plants. The fish eats the plants. So the carbon now is in the fish. And then other fish eat that fish when it dies. But you know what goes to the bottom is the bones. The fish bones. And so the bottom of the ocean, you get start getting these piles of fish bones. Because nothing eats really the fish bones. The fish bones just sit there. And you get these layers and layers of fish bones that eventually over time get compressed into stone. Limestone. Which then we dig out of the, out of the oceans. We dig it out, turns into limestone, and we use it to make chalk and make other things too. You know, we can turn it and dig it out and we use it to make some chalk so we can write on our sidewalks. And in the olden days, they used to write on their chalkboards. And uh, you, you see what's happening now with this carbon is it's cycling now. It's going from the air into the oceans and creating this system here, but not so fast. It's not all good news, baby, because... Burning fossil fuels, that gasoline we're pumping out, creates more carbon in the air. And that carbon warms up our air even more. The oceans start to suck up that extra carbon in the air. But you know what? That, that, that's not all good news because carbon doesn't just warm up our air. It also warms up our oceans. So now the oceans are getting warmer. Now, why is that bad? Because warm oceans can't store as much carbon so now the oceans are like, hey, I've maxed out, guys. I'm hot. I can't store anymore. That carbon now has to go back into the air, making the air even warmer. And that warms up our oceans even more. That You see this problem we're creating. And then look what happens. You got these oceans that used to have so much ice. Now there's no more ice except for this little patch here. And all these penguins are squished on it. Let's do something about this. So now the carbon cycle in the diagram, I said I'm going to put it back together at the very end. Ignore this word here. Don't worry about this. What it's saying is that carbon is going to go into our trees 
and then it's going to be breathed out, respired out by the trees at night. Remember we said at night trees breathe out mostly. Um, it's also used to make fruits. So let's put an apple here. And um, these animals will eat the grass, it'll eat the apples, and then the animal will die, and decomposers will eat the animal, and turn that carbon, these, these decomposers then will breathe out the carbon, right? As they're eating, they got to go, they breathe it out. You got these animals here, they're breathing out carbon as well. You've got these houses, they're breathing out carbon. How does a house breathe out carbon? Well, remember combustion? Oops, let me go back. Remember combustion, it means burning. So we're burning fossil fuels, yeah. And those fossil fuels came from, uh, you know, underneath the earth. Let me show you in the next picture here. We got these fossil fuels. They're coming here. We dig them out, right? We dig them out and we use it to burn in our cars. And then that creates pollution and carbon in the air. And then that goes, some, some of it goes into the trees, you know, and, and the cycle continues. So, oh, look at here, here we got like a lake or, you know, the ocean and you've got this carbon going, let's write carbon, it goes into the oceans, the, the fish breathe it in and eat it up, you know, in the plants and then they die, they turn into limestone, we dig it out. You see how this cycle is, I mean, it, it's a pretty complex cycle, but you know what, if you understand the little parts of it, it starts to make some sense. And you don't have to memorize all this, but you do have to understand the basic idea here. And also some of the concerns that are being created because we are digging out so much carbon out of the earth and burning it into our air. And that's a serious problem because we saw what's happening to the animals. And you know what? At the end of the day, we got to work together to make this earth a better place to live in, which means we got to stop burning so much carbon. We got to make sure that we take care of our planet for ourselves, for humanity, and for the animals. I thank you very much for listening to this, and I hope that it helped you become a more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A uh, more responsible citizen in the world. Thank you very much, guys. Take care, and I'll see you later. <laughs>